Hello, everyone. <laughs> that was a terrible Morgan impression. <laughs> but today we are celebrating my awesome friend and co-host, Morgan Robinson. Happy birthday, Morgan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Before we start, I wanted to, uh, you know, say again, the um, on, on this week's second installment of Where in the World is Morgan Drinking His Hot Beverage Out of? We actually have LA. Ah, oh, yes, very nice. So, and I'm actually wearing the shirt that I was wearing the first time I met you. The original "It's a Wonderful Podcast" logo before I was actually a part of "It's a Wonderful Podcast." So, yes. yeah. I am wearing nondescript clothing. <laughs> very exciting. Because I'm so, very exciting. <laughs> We are doing this pre-recorded stream to celebrate you. Um, you know, we worked closely on our whole feed and it's kind of our special thing. So I wanted to celebrate you all of this week doing kind of fun things. I had you on Machine Mondays. Um, and yeah, so I thought this would be a fun thing to do. Of course, I ideally we would have loved to do this live on your birthday, but life and work and schedules and the fact that you are like eight hours ahead of me in time yes. um causes some issues so um yeah I mean, ultimately it's kind of it's kind of a weird situation at the minute because obviously i'm not going anywhere today on my birthday when people are watching this um but i may still be doing things we may have had time to do this stream but we may not have so that's why we're doing it before Yes, because you may be doing birthday things with your family, and I do exactly. have to work on Thursday. So, yeah. and my work day is like literally in the best times of the day for you. I'll be kind, at work. So. Kind, kind of, kind of. Yeah. So, yes, because of unpredictable things in life and jobs and whatnot, we I still wanted to do something special for you on your birthday yeah. and something special for our patrons and our friends. So hopefully people will tune in and um, have fun with us. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, this this is kind of exciting, really, because this is the first yeah. actual public stream we're doing. I mean, yes. it's not live, but, you know, it's not going to be edited. So no. it's just it's just this what it is. <laughs> it's just what it is. Um, this is a, a sneak preview as to what the patrons get every week. Yes, we the, do these uh, fun, chill streams every Sunday with our patrons. We just kind of talk about nonsense and laugh and have silly inside jokes. And um, Steve, of course, is there with his awesome, ridiculous hashtags. And uh, yeah, we get to know our patrons and it's a really fun thing. So hopefully you guys are in the chat and, you know, we'll be in the chat, of course, popping in and talking to you guys so um yeah. yeah we have some fun things planned on the stream today to celebrate morgan of course um you know what I fun things <laughs> what, what, what are they i'm excited um i sent you a few birthday presents so you'll get to open your presents you already know what they are because where, where, where are the presents sigh where, where, where are the presents <laughs> yes just they're, there, where you're just, pointing. they're just they're just there um, since I did buy them from like private sellers, I couldn't do gift wrapping. So of course you get these packages and they wrote on the side of the box what they actually are. So you are, you are, will not be surprised, but you'll get to look at them and physically hold them when yes. you open them. So I guess there's that. Ultimately but, um, though, I, I, I might know what they are, but I don't know exactly okay. what they are. You know what? Like I know what they are, who they are, but, exactly what they are i don't know yes but i mean certain ones of them only have one version so I yes think but i know. can't remember <laughs> okay all right well then maybe there will be a hint of surprise so that'll be nice so you'll be opening your presents um yes. now open. now <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, soon 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 patience so <laughs> opening presents um, you'll also be going through some of your favorite Morgan hasn't seen some movies that yeah. I've you know forced you to watch that um, have kind of become your favorites, and uh, we will discuss that. And then you know you are a huge Harry Potter fan, um, so we thought we would do test your knowledge of Harry Potter, and I'll throw some yes. uh, Harry Potter questions at you for a pretty epic quiz. Do so, we know how many questions? Um, there's a lot. <laughs> that's a good good there's a lot i know we've had like several sources from this as well i know like uh, yes 
Brandon Kevin has Smith, sent some Brandon questions. Sent Brandon me. has sent some questions, and then some of them are just some I've had. So, um, yes, yes, Fun things. What's, so I'll start. I'll start first? easy. I'll start easy with questions that I think I've maybe thrown at you in the oh, past, okay. but um, just to kind of get you warmed up, and then I'll go into. Kevin asked me some pretty good questions, so um, good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Look, if I, I, I if I don't get all these right, that's just more things I have to learn. Yes. You know, <laughs> if I am getting m the majority of them right, I, I just hope that this this can be my audition for the eventual Harry Potter Schmodown League, where me and Kevin will reign supreme. Yes, yes. Um, so yes, uh, Brandon and Kevin, you know, I asked, hey, throw me some questions and they obliged with plenty of wonderful questions. And like oh I did tell you um, on the latest episode of the show of Machine Mondays, I believe, um, Brandon said one particular question. If you don't say it in character, you are not a true fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So any, any, well. any questions that do require to be honest, because it's my you birthday, might do I'm all feeling it. generous. <laughs> you might because do all of them in character. I might do all of them in character, because it's my birthday and I'm feeling generous. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. What are you drinking, Janine? I'm drinking a red wine. It's called um, Apothic Red, but it's like a different version of it called uh, Inferno. So it's like been aged in like whiskey barrels and mm. things like that. I started this bottle of wine on a uh, Mark and Julie. Mark Riley and a, his beautiful fiance Julie had this ridiculous random stream that went until like four in the morning. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So, you know, I had seen it going, but I was doing other things. I think I was in the middle of watching a movie for studying for the rom coms match. And when the movie was done, I saw the stream was still going and it was like one in the morning. So I like popped in and they were like having a blast and there were like a hundred people or so still in there. Okay. Um, so then I hopped in there and just fun conversations and silliness and lots of drinking. So I was like, I need a drink too. So, um, I pulled out a bottle of wine. I had two different bottles. I had this Apothic Dark and this Apothic Inferno. And I didn't know, I hadn't tried either of them. I just tried like the original Apothic. So I asked Frank in the chat, Hey, which one should I try Frank? And he's like, try the Inferno. Cause that sounds cool. <laughs> it does. Admittedly it does. I would imagine I'd be having one glass maybe of wine today, considering it's my birthday. But right now, as we're recording this way too early in the day for any sort yes. of nonsense <laughs> like that. It is so. like eight in the morning for you. So I um, totally yeah. understand why you wouldn't be drinking any wine, but I am drinking red wine to celebrate you as that is your drink of choice. Um, it is. So, it so is. yes, I remember when I was in the UK visiting and you, me and Rachel each had a complete bottle of wine. So it was, that was, it was, bad, it was, it was a bad situation. <laughs> I say it was a pretty good situation. Lots of laughs and um... oh, sure, yeah. But also, <laughs> my lips like to stain. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> you you're, you had a Badly. pretty purple purple face. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I opened this bottle on um Mark and Julie's stream, and I got to pop on for a little bit, and I was drinking it straight out of the bottle because why the hell not? And uh, sure, I still had some left. So uh, okay, yeah, so I... okay. Sipping on this. Cheers to you, Morgan. Have Thank you. you. Cheers with my now empty mug of coffee. <laughs> what, so, what's, what's first up? Okay, well, how about we talk about your favorite Morgan hasn't seen, now okay. has seen movies? Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, look, the, there's ones that have definitely stood out. There's okay. ones that have also definitely not stood out. Okay. Um, but the ones that have honestly really stood out, I want to say the biggest surprises okay. of, were the Fast and Furious movies. Okay. The absolute biggest surprises because I have I always had my agenda against the Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> um, but I ended up really, and I'm, I'm now a big fan of those movies. The first Fast and Furious movie I saw in the cinema was Hobbs and Shaw. So, you know, I, I was that late. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's why nice. we did the series because it was kind of leading yeah. up to Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was nice. It was nice to it was nice to watch them. I mean, they obviously become something completely different as time goes on. 
Um, and you kind of pref you kind of end up preferring the later ones because of just how nonsense they are. I mean, I know you like Too Fast, Too Furious the best. <laughs> me, and, me and Brandon, Hannah, we like totally vibe on that movie. Like we are quoting it, we are laughing about it. Like we love that movie. I don't like. I don't know what it is. I just love the chemistry between Paul Walker and Tyrese. Tyrese is hilarious. Tyrese has always kind of reminded me of my brother. So there's a lots of mo moments in there where he's reminding me of my brother. So okay. um, that's always kind of like a nice thing. And uh, yeah, like it's just very silly and funny, and um, lots of just great lines that kind of stick with you. So it's and it's like the, it's like back. It stays kind of simple. Um, so I still yeah. kind of like the simpleness of it uh, compared to the others that have gotten kind of bald. The, the early movies, though, in that franchise have just the ugliest cars possible, though. <laughs> and they are very, you know, they, they're still kind of car based movies at the start, yeah. right? So that's kind of why I don't tend to like them as much. Yeah. Because um, the only car that I could honestly say he's nice to look at is Dom's whatever you like want American muscle called. cars. His muscle car, yeah. Um, that's an actual nice car, but the rest of the stuff, I mean, yes, the Fast and Furious is prime early noughties in its original form. So the cars are bright green and bright orange and have spoilers and just look horrendous. There's too much stuff going on, yeah. Yeah. Have like flames down the side. It's just next. It's just <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. Um, but as as it's gone on, the cars have kind of gotten sleeker with yeah. the you know with with what top cars look like these days. But I'm not I, I'm not into cars all that much, which is why also I didn't think I would like Fast and Furious. But then once four comes around, you realise this isn't about cars anymore. No, it's about family. <laughs> it is about it is about family. And I really like the Fast and Furious. I would happily say I'm a fan of those movies now, which is something I never thought I would say. So that has been that's the honest big highlight of Morgan hasn't seen. Well that makes me very proud. <laughs> yeah. I knew you you thought you were gonna hate them. I did. And even I the did. ones that you didn't care for that much, you still like found things to like about them and still it hasn't taken away from the franchise as a whole. Sure, you know, I mean even Tokyo Drift, even <laughs> Tokyo Drift had had Han there, Han was there. Yes. And the Yakuza stuff was good in Tokyo Drift. Sonny Chiba was there. Yes. Lucas Black. No. <laughs> You don't like his accent and him talking no. about DK like Donkey Kong. I'm truly devastated that Lucas Black is going to be in the ninth. Movie. I will die if he says Donkey Kong in this new movie. Like, me and Brandon are just like, oh my gosh. If he says Donkey Kong, <laughs> I will be so happy. Oh, for God's sake. I don't I don't know. I do not know. Um but yeah, Fast and Furious I think has been the highlight, closely followed by John Wick. Okay. I really like John Wick movies as well. When it comes to action movies, I like non-stop action movies as opposed to those kind of more elaborate ones that seem to, you know, have a store, have a subplot and have a story. Um John Wick are really, really focused, simple action movies that are absolutely non-stop. All of them are like that to a point. I mean, the second one, it goes a little bit strange. And the third one, the newest one, which we did the series for, um, obviously there's that whole weird thing with Jerome Flynn in Morocco, I think it was. That was oh, just yeah. a little bit weird. But it's still kind of non-stop action. The first one's still one of the best action movies of the last decade. Well, I mean, all the action has been super solid in those movies. Um, Absolutely. And I love that you see that it's him doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel like it started off with such a simple story. Like, so simple. Yeah. Clean, simple revenge story. And around it, like, you got hints of this very interesting world. So I like that, you know, they took the next two to kind of really elaborate on this interesting world that they kind of got you intrigued about because that was kind of a side thought you were really focused on him and his revenge story and all of that 
but then you kind of have this little side piece of, oh, wow, this interesting, the continental and this whole, you know, yeah. assassin world. And so I like that they took the time to kind of expand on that. Um, and you still get all the amazing action. So, yeah, it's a really great series. Yeah, I mean, we started Morgan Hasn't Seen as well with MCU movies. Um because there was a select few that I hadn't seen, and that was up to Endgame. Yeah, and it was kind of like going to be a one-off kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it turned into it turned into the the absolute nonsense show. And I think, to be honest, average listenership wise, it's maybe the most popular. I mean, it's probably not actually because Machine Mondays <laughs> is very popular. Um, but people love Morgan hasn't seen. People seem to really like listening to Morgan Hasn't Seen. I think it's because we tend to be very silly. Yes. On that show, as opposed to others, as opposed to the main show, at least. Um, which we do, it does have its silly moments, sure. Yeah. But I like that it started, or the show started with those MCU movies, and watching those was just really fun as well, because. It was kind of, they were kind of, they were earlier ones for the most part. I think they were all actually kind of earlier ones. They were all, it was Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Thor, Thor the Dark World, Iron Man 3, and The Incredible Hulk. So yeah, yeah. you, so you the, missed like the, six early ones. So they were kind of like, you know, you had a puzzle that you were putting together and those were like the missing pieces of the puzzle. Basically, <laughs> I, I, yeah, basically I had just watched first Avenger, and then gone straight into the Avengers, and then just gone from there. Yeah, so you'd seen everything but just, the, like, the early six movies. So I certainly like... didn't watch them in order, either. The first MCU... Well, the first MCU movie I had watched was the first Avenger, but then I definitely watched... Um, I definitely watched Civil War before I'd watched the Avengers. Oh my gosh! So I'm all over the place, really, when it came to you know my yeah. mcu watching but now i've seen them all and you know i'm all the same as you and excited as to what's coming next next year now i think is when they're all due to come out they yeah there won't be any this year now. black widow and such a bummer i was so will excited they, for that. No, there won't be any this year now will there no, is black no. widow is still in november uh, yes i think it's still in november as of right now okay but, yeah well fair enough bummer. yeah it is it is but you know an understandable one so Yes. So yeah, we're still going to get them at some point. We will. We're still going to get them at some point. But that was really fun. I remember doing the Men in Black stuff, which I really enjoyed watching yeah. Men in Black. Uh, Independence Day, less so. Boo, Independence Day. <laughs> yes, that was um, our bonus uh, for that series. I also actually really liked the teen movie stuff. Like okay. Varsity Blues was a <laughs> great movie. <laughs> Um, I don't want your life. <laughs> Vanderbeek, Vanderbeek's just great. Peak. I mean, it always peak beak. Absolutely, it always makes me laugh because there are there. There's like a really good up and coming Dutch football player called Donny Vanderbeek. Oh yeah. So whenever I see his name, it's just like Vanderbeek. Is James Vanderbeek playing? Football, football again? Yeah. High quality <laughs> European football? Yes. No, he isn't. Yeah, but it's funny when commentators say, Van der Beek. He's like, where? Where is he? He's not there. <laughs> no, it's, it's not there. James Van der Beek. Uh, it's yes. the other one. Um, yeah, I was what? glad to show you. Those were like big movies for me, um, my kind of generation. And I was obsessed with Dawson's Creek. I literally was like moving things around in my like a little studio in here and i found my uh dawson's creek binder like i actually made a binder of just like magazine pictures and articles and like about all dawson's of... creek yes That's i think i even impressive. i even printed out like synopses of episodes and i have them all <laughs> in there i think i have pages from my diary where like i first mentioned dawson's creek like oh my That's gosh very I, discovered, impressive. I discovered this awesome new show and it's got this guy like the first time i'd seen 
James Vanderbeek was in an episode of Clarissa Explains It All. And I remembered him because I thought he was like so cute. So, <laughs> so when Dawson's Creek came out, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the guy from Clarissa Explains It All. So my diary page literally says, oh my gosh, I just discovered this new show with the guy, the cute guy from Clarissa Explains It All and the other guy from Mighty Ducks. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> cute. Like, <laughs> like, I literally saved the diary pages that I wrote like about discovering Dawson's Creek and I put those in my Dawson's Creek binder. I'm like, I was such a loser. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, yes, you were. What a lovable one. And that's really what yeah. we have to focus on. I, I, think. Was, I was obsessed, obsessed with Dawson's Creek. So of course I'm going to watch Varsity Blues. And Cruel Intentions. Joshua Jackson's in there with his yeah. bleak blonde hair. And Cruel Intentions was a weird movie though. There's a lot of odd tension in Cruel Intentions. I... I didn't like Cruel Intentions as much as the other ones in that series, to be honest. Yeah. It was just, it was unusual. It was way too much weird, incestuous chemistry. Yeah, so I liked that. Because I kind of, I picked that those ones that were really, like, the most parodied in Not Another Teen Movie, because that was our bonus. So I, I wanted you to, that that <laughs> I was, wanted you to that have that context. Movie. I wanted you to have all that context of these uh, spoofs that were going to show up in Not Another Teen Movie. So I made sure that I picked the ones that were kind of heavily spoofed upon. So, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was good. It was worth... Worth all the all the nonsense. I know you really enjoyed Can't Hardly Wait. I think was that your kind of favorite of the series? Because I think we did, did we, that. Did we even do Can't Hardly Wait in oh, the no, series? I, did, did we just watch I think it? I wanted to. I think I wanted to, but because of just how we had the episodes, we couldn't. So I think yeah, we just watched Can't Hardly Wait so you could get. Because I was like, I want you to at least watch this movie so you can get the context. Because that's also parody. Plus, it's just a really great teen movie. So I did I did really like Can't Hardly Wait. I especially liked Seth Green's white boy trying to be <laughs> black. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like that. A bit problematic, but it works because a, just like, a little making just him, a little bit. They're making him the joke. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So, but no can't can't hardly wait was great. All you know those those teen movies were great. The animated stuff that we did for like two months was yeah. really fun. Um, we did Disney animated, and then we did non Disney animated. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's been so much good stuff on Morgan hasn't seen, and so many movies that I'm now thankful to have seen. Um, recently, I think in the last um, the, this current series that's going on right now, uh, Maverick has been my favorite so far of this yeah, movies based, based on, on TV, TV show. Mm -hmm. The last one, which was movies about TV. I really liked Ed TV. <laughs> and you did. I don't think you expected to like that. I movie didn't well. expect <laughs> that to like that as much. I really did like that. It was way smarter than it had any right being. Which is why, why what I liked. About yeah. It. Even I kind of thought that like watching it back, like I picked it. I've seen it many times, but just kind of watching it back with you and like hearing your kind of pers new perspective on it, I kind of was like, yeah, this is kind of deeper than I it is. thought it was. It is. <laughs> Very smart, you know, how it thinks about things. So Yeah. But yeah. no, I I've I've had a blast with Morgan hasn't seen. You know I have. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. That's good. And I cause I have so many ideas, like you you don't even know. <laughs> oh yeah. We, I'm sure you have the next four years of yes. Morgan hasn't seen planned out. Well, and you know what? We'll do it. We'll yeah. do it, Janine. Even if it involves Twilight. Even if it involves Twilight. Okay. Because yeah, um, I think uh, I did a poll for patrons, and I think what's actually won the poll or is winning the poll is for next month is movies about music. So movies about yeah. music. Okay, mm -hmm. like where music plays a big part of the plot. So yeah. okay, the uh, my my laptop charger appears to be not plugged in properly. Oh goodness! So that. that's why I'm leaning forward awkwardly. So I'm just okay. going to do that um, again. Okay. Don't want to lose power. We don't. For all of these um, amazing people watching this right now, because I'm sure we there have we go. a ton of people watching this right now. Well, obviously, yes. <laughs> obviously. 300,000 people. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are um, popular. <laughs> so like popular. Yeah. No, this is why I like Can't <laughs> Hardly Wait, because I'm ultimately Preston. Yes. <laughs>
can I, uh, is it possible for me to get comfortable again? Yes. Yes, it is. Hi. Okay. Oh, no, I've just bashed that. Oh, no, no. This is the kind of usual nonsense we have on the live streams. Well, you're going to have to <laughs> adjust the laptop with my foot. Well, are like you that. are you going to have to get up anyway to get your presents? Because they're over there. <laughs> they are over there. Um, yeah. No, I can reach. I can reach. Is okay. that what's coming next? I think that's what's coming next. I okay, think we're gonna then. open I these presents. Do an then... Reach. I should do okay. an awkward reach to go get the presents. Entertain the people. <laughs> okay, I'll entertain them with "Happy Birthday to You." Presents. Happy Birthday to You. Happy Birthday, dear Morgan. Ow. <laughs> happy birthday to you. I've never heard happy birthday sung in such a meaningful way. Oh, well, you're right. Usually people sing happy birthday <laughs> oh, to you. Oh, for God's sake, can we get on with this? <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, there's a cake. Yes, stand up at the front, blow the candles out. Happy birth. And then when it's somebody's like dad, or grandparent and you're all getting together as a family for the birthday and everybody yeah. says different names because everybody calls oh. them different names oh god happy oh, birthday dad, birthday happy birthday it's just nonsense nobody yeah. right we should all get together at the start of the and whole decide class. what we're going to call him now. when we sing. It's time to sing happy birthday. Right, guys, one name, right? What are we, what what are are we, we calling him? <laughs> what are we calling him this year? We can all decide now. It really doesn't matter. But we can't have the same situation we always have because it sounds horrendous. <laughs> yes, that is a universal issue. Birthday. It is. Issue. It is. Anyway, presents. Mm -hmm. I have two presents. You have one more coming, but it's... I also have a knife. Oh, goodness. To open the presents <laughs> with. I was I thought about this. Uh, this present says exactly what it is on the side. <laughs> oh, goodness. It doesn't just say Funko. It also, it also if you looks carefully. <laughs> says exactly love good. Yes. Um, because, and somebody wrote that in there on Sharpie, so... They did. It was. It is not printed on the label. So no. if, if I was to just look at the label, no idea. No idea what it mm -hmm. was. Can I get into the present? Yes. <laughs> Ow. Why? That's the knife poking me in the well, leg. Be careful. <laughs> this is not what people came for. There's there's the piece of paper. Throw it, throw it over there. This, this Funko appears to have been bashed. Not bashed. <gasps> But moved. Oh no! Basically, the character is not stood upright. Oh she no! She appears to be lied down inside the box. Oh my gosh! <laughs> However, it's Luna Lovegood, but it's not only Luna Lovegood. It is Gryffindor Lion Head Luna Lovegood. Yes, that is the one you wanted, right? <laughs> and look at look at her lied down All in the box. jacked up in the box. But you take them out of the box anyway, right? I do. I'm one of those people that takes them out of the box. I keep the boxes for storage purposes. But, you know, where are you going to put all those boxes on your shelf? This, they're too bulky. Yes. You have them you all. Wanna you want to see them. You want to see the big them in little scenes. Yes. You know, like, I have Thor and Valkyrie stood next to each other, being the king and queen of Asgard. Um, who else do I have? I have the, have the your, shelf mustaches. Oh, you have your mustache hall of fame with Grandpa Joe and, uh, and Ron, Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson. <laughs> it's perfect. I'm just going to throw this over there. You have all your Game of Thrones people together. Exactly. It works, right? But yes, here is Luna. Luna Lovegood. Yes. Uh, on the back of this, we also have um, what looks like Order of the Phoenix. Well, it's all Order of the. Ph Is it all Order of the Phoenix? I feel like it's I not all Order of the Phoenix. Movie. I always forget that movie. <laughs> no, for, <laughs> yeah, but for some for some reason, these Funko Pops appear to be this. What a weird. What a, let me just read out the back. You know, because they always have the things mm -hmm. on the back. We have Prisoner of Azkaban, 
Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Why are they on the... Okay. We have Lupin, Prisoner of Azkaban. We have Ginny Weasley, who is just, like, nondescript Ginny Weasley. Okay. We have Peter Pettigrew, so Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm -hmm. But then we have very obvious Order of the Phoenix, yes. Lionhead Luna. Are there, like, no other figures from that movie? Is that why I forget it all the time? <laughs> they, have, they have to be, because where's your umbrages? I'm sure I'm sure Harry has a phoenix, a phoenix, I was going to say. Harry has a, a figure from every movie. So, you know, so. yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what's going on there, but yay. Thank you, Janine, You're for welcome. the lovely present. There is right. another, where am I going to put it? I can't put it anywhere. I'll put it over there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Stop she was all jacked up in her box, but. <laughs> with that, no, that isn't your fault. That is the fault of whoever put it in secondary present which it says on the label which it does is. say directly on the label so this is even worse really oh no it's kind of better actually <sighs> because to write it on the side in the sharpie is like yeah this is a gift but screw these people we're just going to tell them what it is anyway um i can't get into it i'm cutting down the open bit and the cardboard's going out oh dear <laughs> what have you done cut. I'm just going to cut in. I'm not good at opening things. <laughs> I've never been good at opening things. Like, bottled water can't open something. This, the, it's legitimately not opening. It's taped too heavy. <laughs> there we are. That knife looks pretty crocodile dundee sized to get things open. <laughs> crocodile dundee? Yeah. No, it's it's one of the multi knife Purpose things. Knives, uh... Yeah, that I've got perched dangerously on my leg. Careful, you might need that leg. This is just going to be so loud for people. <laughs> oh, the tape Sorry. sound. This is not. This is what I should not be doing unboxing videos on my. <laughs> no, you should not. On my Instagram live. And whatever people do. Look at the state of this box. Oh no, it's all jacked up too. No, 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 no. The way I've opened it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out. I know what the figure is. Uh, again, I know what the figure This is taking way too long. <laughs> get open. <laughs> we have bubble wrap. We have bubble wrap, so, you know, it's two presents in one because we get to play with bubble wrap. I legitimately can't get it out of the box. Oh, my gosh. Get out of the box. Thank you. Go over there. Ow. Bye. Bye. Thank you. We have bubble wrap. Okay. I'm not going to pop the bubble wrap now because Save I'll do it later. Right okay. Because that is a birthday treat. <laughs> Obviously. We have. Oh, this is, this is a lovely, a lovely figure. <laughs> lovely figure. It is Victor Crumb. Victor yeah. Crumb. You wanted Victor Crumb. I did want Victor Crumb because obviously I love complete tertiary Harry Potter characters. I would never get a Harry Potter Funko Pop. I would always get a Victor Crumb Funko Pop. So should I tell you what the third one is since it hasn't arrived yet? And it'll probably say what it is. <laughs> but I, yes, but this isn't just Victor Crumb. This is one of the new brand Harry Potter figures. You know, the white ones. Mm -hmm. It's not just Victor Crumb. It's not like Triwizard Tournament Victor Crumb. It's not Quidditch Victor Crumb. It is Yule Ball oh, Victor Crumb. Yeah, everyone got a Yule Ball. And you can tell it's one of the new ones because it's got the horrible Wizarding World logo. Uh, horrible. Yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> um, in this set, we can also have Sybil Trelawney, Forks, okay. Yule Ball Fleur Delacour, or basically all the champions in Yule Ball gear. Okay. So you can get Cedric. Diggory. And Harry. Harry looks terrible. Victor Crumb obviously looks great. Look at him. Look at his beard. You can't really see it. Bad. It's great. I like it. Yay. So, thank you. You're welcome. So the last figure that has not come yet is also, you know, your 
of the tertiary side character the ter- Is it a tertiary Harry Potter character? No. Well, yes, oh. yes, it is. <laughs> it is a tertiary Harry Potter character. It is, and from the same movie. Igor Karkarov. <laughs> I love Igor Karkarov. He's the best. He also has such a good figure. Yes. So, is so good. nobody awesome. else in the world has an Igor Karkarov figure. Nobody goes and looks <laughs> at Harry Potter one. Funkos and goes, Karkarov. I want Karkarov. Other than me, obviously. Yes. So, um, I love Karkarov. He's great. Karkarov is on his way. So, happy birthday, friend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My charger's not wanting to play the game today. Oh, no. At all. I don't know why. Thank you. Birthday oh, presents are birthdays. So, you've you've gone through all of your favorites Morgan hasn't seen? seen yes. These? Okay. So, I guess it's, it's time. <laughs> I'm actually going to position them for good luck in the quiz. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put them up here. One there. One there. Can you see them? Oh, look at the positioning. Ow! Oh, no. <laughs> it's not going to work, is it? I mean, it might. It might. It's not gonna, I, I tell you what I'll do. You see this lamp? I'm going to put them on top of the lamp. Okay. I'm going to balance them horribly. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. I'll just put them over there again. All right. It's not going to work. Okay. It's They're still acting as support. Quiz time. All right. Are you ready? Yes. I think so. Quiz. I will um, not be Googling any answers. We will okay. now go into... Please play along, everyone, as well. You can play along in the... If, you know, if we're, if you're watching this, if we do manage to make this a, a premiere, um, play along in the live comments of the premiere, because we'll be there as well. One of us will be there, if not yeah. both of us. Um, what else? What else can you do? Um, you know, just play along. Just you know, wish, shout out to yourself at home. Birthday. Yes. Okay. What is the name of Hagrid's brother? Hagrid's brother? Yes. Hagrid's giant brother? Yes. Gropy. <laughs> you have to call him Gropy because that's what Hagrid calls him. Yes. Okay. Success. Which one of Hagrid's parents was a giant? <laughs> Which one of Hagrid's parents was a giant? His mother. Okay. Very good. See, because okay. he could. Because <laughs> when I was when I was six years old, I could pick my dad up and put him on top of the dresser. Yes, well, that's the story he tells to impress the ladies. It is. <laughs> In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, because he's upset, Ron enlists Hermione to pass along a message to Harry that Hagrid is looking for him. Name the two students Hermione says pass the oh, message along God. to her. It's a horribly <laughs> overworded situation. I can't make it too easy on you. Name two students? Yeah, it's two. Tell, ask the question again. I want to repeat. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, because he's upset, Ron enlists Hermione to pass along a message to Harry that Hagrid is looking for him. Name the two students Hermione says passed the message along to her. I feel like there's 17 students' names in I, that sentence. I that thought sentence that too. Part. I thought that too. And then when I watched it back, it was, I think, only two. <laughs> I want to say Pavati Patel kind of... mm-hmm. and Seamus Finnegan. No. Nope. Or Dean. Yes, it's Dean. <laughs> yeah, Seamus is definitely in there. Is it not like Seamus told Pavati to tell Dean to tell Ron to tell me? I think it's just Dean. Dean told Pavati. Dean told Pavati. Ah, yeah. okay. Fair enough. He told me. Yeah, I thought Both it was a bunch of people lines. too. I thought it was a bunch of people too, and then like I watched it, and I was like, "That's it." Okay. How many can't even remember that line? Yes, because it's like nonsense. And then she just nonsense. told him to shut up and handle their business. Is that one of your questions? Are you going to tell me when they're one of Brandon or yes, Kevin's I, questions I will, or something? Okay. Yes. 
Okay, in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what is the incorrect spell Gilderoy Lockhart uses in an effort to mend Harry's broken arm? Do, do you want me to do this in character? <laughs> I, I always do it in character. <laughs> to mend his broken arm? Yes. Brachium emendo. <laughs> yes. For some reason that he says it like that. Yes, brachium emendo. Yes. All and right, then it, and then it goes floppy, 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 floppy. floppy, floppy, floppy. <laughs> There's no bones left. <laughs> As you can clearly see, the bones are no longer broken. <laughs> broken. Thanks, thanks Gilderoy. <laughs> Gilderoy, Gilderoy Lockhart. And I love uh, uh, Hagrid's commentary there. It's great. Obvious, <laughs> obvious, ridiculous. Um, okay, well, I'll say you did get the, the Dean Pavarti one. I'm not going to count that. No. No, no you no. didn't. Okay. I'm okay. not, not going to count that. I'm okay. going to be harsh to myself. Okay. If I'm not getting them perfect, then there's no point. Okay. All right. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what is the name of the medicine that's used to grow Harry's bones back? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the one that's not pumpkin juice? No. <laughs> yes. That. Yeah. I believe... It's called Skelly Grow. It is. Which is a ridiculous name. Yes. In Harry Potter. Here, drink, drink this. Here, yeah, drink this. It'll hurt, but it'll 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 grow your bones back or whatever she says. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, just like that. Thanks, Pomfrey. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, what is the name of the student Hermione gets hair from? For her I would like to challenge the question. <laughs> I would like to challenge the question for using the incorrect name of the movie and book and story. Okay. Okay. Because this is you and Harry Potter and <laughs> the Philosopher's Stone. Thank you. What is the name of the student Hermione gets hair from for her polyjuice potion that ultimately turns her into a cat? <laughs> Millicent Bullstrode. Yes. Slytherin. She has, he has to go like that as well with the hair. Slytherin. I picked this off her robes. I'm going to do it. Oh dear, it was cat hair. <laughs> Thanks, Hermione. Oh my gosh. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, name what object or source caused each victim to be only petrified and not killed by the Ooh, basilisk? Each of them? <laughs> yes. Okay, let's try and go in order, shall we? Okay. Mrs. Norris. There was water on the ground. Okay. So she saw the reflection of the basilisk. Justin Finch Fletchley saw the basilisk through nearly headless Nick. Yes. Nick's already dead, so he can't mm. die again. But he gets petrified as well. Colin saw it through the camera. Yes. And Hermione saw it through the mirror looking around corners. Yes. There you go. All right. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, why does Professor McGonagall reward Ron and Harry points for defeating the troll? Again, I would like to challenge the question. In Harry think... Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, why does Professor McGonagall reward Ron and Harry points for defeating the troll? <laughs> for sheer dumb luck. Yes, there you go. You know, I was you... hoping for that. <laughs> was that the was that the one? Or is yes, it just it was. this is just going to be so many with actual <laughs> impressions yes i think so that's not oh, the one. that oh it's not the one okay no no i will tell you when it's the one what is the name no, don't of... don't because don't because if i don't do it then i have to okay. do it I have okay to keep all right it. i won't say what is the name of the place her money apparates to when the snatchers find them and why does she choose that place well, the forest of dean because she used to go on camping trips there okay with her parentals. Yes. Um, in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, what is the hors d'oeuvre at Slughorn's party called that gives you oh, terrible breath? <laughs> I this love is, this question. This is, this is your... This is your... This is a very you question, isn't it? Yes. Because we've talked about this. We have. Kevin hates all... this question. <laughs> he actually made a flashcard. I don't like this. Does. I don't like this question either. Because <laughs> I think the correct answer is Dragon Balls. <laughs> that is what Harry mistakenly calls it. 
let it oh, okay. go Dragon Balls. See, that's why I don't like the question, because it's got different names. Go on, then. What's the real... Remind me of what the real answer is. Dragon Tartar. Dragon Tartar. Yes. It's called Dragon Balls. But Harry Potter mistakenly calls it Dragon Balls. Well... Kevin Smets, I don't like that question either, so yeah. we're on the same page. He gave me lots of shit for throwing that question at him. <laughs> I do not uh, like that question. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping for an impression on this one. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it's not the one. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, what is the name of Aunt Marge's dog? <laughs> 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 I wonder why you want an impression of this. Ripper! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, for God's All right. Sake. <laughs> In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what is the name of the couple that the Dursleys have over for dinner? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> The Masons. Yes. Not down, Popkin. Wait till the Masons arrive. There's your Petunia Dursley impression. Very good. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what is the topic of Uncle Vernon's joke that he tells Harry <laughs> ruined the punchline to? <laughs> You've just ruined the punchline of my Japanese golfing joke. Yes, and I heard that's like a dirty joke. It probably is. <laughs> like, I think Kevin like actually broke down like what that whole joke is, and I'm like, oh. I feel like it's probably racist as well. I don't actually know what the joke yeah. is in its entirety. Yes, um, I don't remember, but I remember it being scandalous. <laughs> um, what is the name of Gilderoy Lockhart's autobiography? Magical me. Yes. Bonus points if you can name his uh, book that he writes after. Oh, this <laughs> is his memory. <laughs> oh, this is a. This isn't even a book thing. This is like a this world is like post, thing. This is just and a, it's post credit. It's like a post credit scene. The book he writes after. Who am I? Gilda from Lockhart. Who am I? <laughs> who are you? Uh, uh, who am I? This is an odd sort of place, isn't it? Do you live here? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing a Gilderoy Lockhart impression again. I did ask you this before, but you didn't get it, so we'll see if you can get it now. No. Oh, I'll give okay. you a bonus point for the thing. Um, how many weeks has Gilderoy Lockhart's Magical Me been on the top of the Daily Prophets best? I always get it wrong. I always get it wrong. <laughs> Because I always mistake it with the amount of times he's won Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award. <laughs> it is celebrating it's, its 27th week. Yes. You got it. On top seven. of the Daily Profits best-selling list, yes. Seven is like a recurring number that's always seems to be a Oh, lot. yeah, you're right. Seven is the most magically um, magic number. However, it's phrased. It, it's it's that <laughs> magic, it's, magic number. No, according, you know, that's that's the whole point of it. Um, uh, rolling for all her weird thoughts about things these days says seven is the most magically magic number. Right. So that's why it's used all the time. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, what is the number of the Hogwarts Express? Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> three? No, it's not. Is it? I'm gonna go three one two seven, but it's not. No, no, fifty nine seventy two. I should know that. That's a you bad should. one. Yeah. Really should know that. Oof. Okay. I don't look at the train that much. Well, what time does the Hogwarts Express depart? Eleven o'clock. Yes. On the dot. Um. Uh. Oh, this is. <laughs> This is kind of a messed up question, but okay. I mean, I think if, I think if you know, if you pay attention, you always know, like because this happens multiple times. What glasses lens does Harry crack while traveling by flu powder? <laughs> oh God! As though you're ever gonna really pay attention. I feel like it's his right lens. No, it's his left. It's always it... his left. Like when when his glasses break, it's always the left. Okay. One, I think. Yeah. Fair enough. 
That's a. I mean, that's a. If if somebody got that question in an actual showdown match, that is a real stinker. Because well, I, I know it's only two answers, but you're not gonna pay attention to that. Well, I think Brandon in his first match, his first Inner Geekdom match, he got asked what side is Nick Fury's eye patch on. <laughs> so, oh, that's questions horrible. Like, questions like that have horrible <laughs> question. Yeah. <laughs> In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, what makes uh, what make and model is the flying car? A Ford Anglia. Yes, there you go. All right. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, how many muggles saw the flying car? No less than <laughs> seven muggles. Again, seven. Easy, as we just talked about the importance of seven. Thanks, um, Alan. And- we could have seen the flying car as we were at the uh, <laughs> facade of the Hogwarts train, st- of the train station <laughs> of King's Cross station. King's, King's Cross station, which is in the Harry Potter world, right next to the real King's Cross station, for some reason not actually King's Cross station. Yeah, there was like this fancy hotel, and we went there because that's the hotel where the steps are from the uh, If You Want to Be My Lover Spice Girls video. So that's why we went there, to take pictures on the Spice Girls steps. And we took pictures out front, and it was only when we were watching <laughs> the movie that I was like, what? And like, <laughs> it's the scene with the flying car and it's the same facade of that hotel that we, where the Spice Girl steps are that they use as King's Cross Station. And King's Cross Station is literally right across the street from that hotel. <laughs> it is. It is. So, yes. Um, so, yeah, we were there. It's great. Um, who plays Professor Sprout? <laughs> The, the absolute icon of the entire world, Miriam Margulies. Oh yes, scandalous. She she takes care of her. It. She takes care of her servicemen. That's for sure. Oh, she does. So, she does. Go to, go. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go down the Graham Norton wormhole and watch all the episodes with her. She has some scandalous stories. She's she, great. <laughs> she's just completely unfiltered. <laughs> completely unfiltered. She's the best yes i mean some of her opinions may be questionable but you know she's just the best she's hilarious um okay uh what movie does professor snape finally become professor of the dark arts professor of the dark arts yes well professor he becomes becomes defense against the dark arts professor in the half-blood prince Yes. Yes, okay. Because it's the whole running gag of him always wanting that job and yes. then some new professor who comes in and then something happens and they have to leave. It yes. is. All right. I think that's Wait, well, it's, it's a curse. It's a curse, though. Yes. It's a curse that Voldemort put on the school when he was refused position of that, uh, when he was refused that position at the age of 18, I believe, when he came he came back and said, Hello, Albus, I would like to be Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. And he was like, No, Tom, no. We're not going to allow you to do that. Go away. <laughs> and then Tom said, I curse this position for the entirety of my life. Oh, and, he did, okay. and he did do that. Everybody so is why only... Each... Last a year. Yeah, that's why everybody only lasts a year in that position um, in that position and oh, it, it okay. doesn't have to always be new people like for example mcgonagall could have took the role of defense against the dark arts professor but she could only have been in it for a year okay before moving back to otherwise you know something terrible would have happened <clears throat> like it All did right, to everybody I, else i like that context oh thank you for that so I was just thought it was just like this funny thing, like to always screw <laughs> Snape out of the position. Uh, originally, uh, look, obviously, originally it kind of probably was, but world building was built around it. Oh, thank you for that context because I have not read the books. I've only read the first one, and that was like ages ago. So okay, um, okay. So we're now we're getting to Brandon's questions here. Brandon's questions. So this is from the Philosopher's Stone. Who saves Harry from Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest? <laughs> Ferenz the Centaur. Yes. Um, also, Philosopher's Stone, what does Devil Snare hate? Sunlight. Devil Snare hates sunlight. <laughs> Thanks, Hermione. Yes. 
it, thanks movie Hermione because I think it's actually um, Ron. It might actually be Ron in the book. Uh, it's been a while since I've opened the pages of the Philosopher's Stone, to be perfectly honest. But yeah. All right. Um, in Chamber of Secrets, uh, when his spell against Draco backfires, what does Ron begin to cough up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake, it's horrible. Slugs, some of which are green, some of which are black, some of which are brown, some of which are yellow. He said they were all flavored nicely. So that when he's Oh, well, nicely, I'm sure they, they were. They actually tasted good. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, he said they like flavored them so they would taste good. Had to be it's still horrible. <laughs> all right. Still Chamber of Secrets. Um, what is written on the wall with the blood of Filch's cat? <laughs> Ooh. The exact quote? Yes. I feel like, yeah, it's the, the Chamber of Secrets has been opened, enemies of the air beware. Yes. I was, I was confusing it with her body lies in the chamber forever, which is the later one. Um, okay, Prisoner of Azkaban. Yes. Which of Harry's textbooks attacks him in his room? <laughs> the Monster Book of Monsters. Yes. The best textbook ever. Yes. That was hilarious. With the impression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I like when he's like on his bed and it's just kind of like looking around <laughs> before he jumps on it. <laughs> like that's how my bulldogs are like when I mess with them. Then yeah. they'll just like. I imagine they make like, the same noise. And then they'll like freeze for a minute. And then I'll like kind of creep and get close. And then they're like perfectly still and they know like I'm just messing with them. <laughs> and then they'll go, ah! <laughs> like they're like, attacking me all crazy. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> so I like that the book was just kind of like looking around yeah. and then he jumps on it. It's hilarious. Um, okay. If he doesn't answer, <laughs> okay, this is how I said it. Sorry. Yes. This is the okay. <laughs> um, how many years? Serious black spend in Azkaban. <laughs> I can't shout down the microphone. I'll kill people's ears, Brandon. I did my waiting. Twelve years of it in Azkaban. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Thanks for that. It's okay. I can't shout that loudly. I has I had to whisper shout then, Brandon. <laughs> Appreciate that you're wanting me to do impressions, though. Yes. Okay. Goblet of fire. fire. Goblet yes. of fire. Um. Love goblet uh, of fire. Ooh, this best. is a good one. This is a good one, Brandon. This is a good one. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is the truth serum used by Snape to get Barty Crouch Jr. to talk? Well, it'll be Veritas serum. Yes. Because that's the truth serum. Yes. Um, okay, now these are Kevin's questions. Ooh, okay. And I think he has about ten, and then that's that's the quiz. So Yay. Um, well, that, that might run us just just over an hour. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like it. Who stars as Luna Lovegood in the Harry Potter saga? <laughs> it's Ivana Lynch. She's Yay. great. She was on Dancing with the Stars. Was she? She was. She's not done barely anything else. I think she's yeah. more of a... Is she like a model? I want to say she's a model. Maybe. That was my phone. Yeah, she's great. She was like so wonderful in those movies. Um, which four ghosts visit Harry when he activates the Resurrection Stone? Hmm. At the end. Yes. So, James. Mm -hmm. Lily. Mm -hmm. Remus. Mm -hmm. And Sirius. Yes. So sad. Re Remus, your son. What? Remus has a son? The yeah. movies didn't tell you that. I know. Like, I only knew that because when the last movie was coming out, I read all the Cliff's notes about everything. <laughs> or Teddy Tonks. Like, they're about to say, and then... Is it in the it's Order not... of the Phoenix where they're about to it's, say? It's... Me no, and it's, have news. It's, um, <laughs> it's the start. It's the start of Deathly Hallows. It's the start of Deathly Hallows Part 1 where they're all changing into Harry. Uh, that, with the, oh, is that the start of Deathly Hallows? Yeah, with the Polyjuice Potion, where they're is all changing. Why do I feel like that's earlier? Where they're, because Deathly Hallows is part one and part two, and it's 
very mo- it's long, very long. very story heavy okay. oh yeah um, because that's when dumbledore comes to get him and then dumbledore is- dumbledore is dead no oh yeah no where why am i thinking why am i, I thinking know. it's earlier why am i thinking it's earlier because i don't know dumbledore comes to get harry at the start of half blood prince, prince from, from the little date. cafe yes yes where he was about to go on the date yes. with that one waitress and he would have had a very nice time I have no doubt about pretty. that. She the was. girl. <laughs> she was very pretty. pretty. So thanks, very thanks, pretty. <laughs> the girl. Thanks for taking me away from that sure thing there, Albus. No. Who's 16 <laughs> at this time? She's not yeah. 16. Harry's supposed to be 16. She's at yeah. least 25. Oh, well, hey. He's got the moves. I know, so. I know but 16. <laughs> <laughs> 16 year olds have jobs sure like but 16 i like i think when when you turn 18 like everything anything goes it's fine but 16 i just don't know why i feel like that's earlier. Is, i don't know no i don't know why either because okay. it isn't okay <laughs> fair <laughs> enough i trust you <laughs> I promise you <laughs> um okay moody, moody strides in and says and it cuts her off and be like, we haven't got time for time all for this. That list, yeah. And that's like the last time you see him. It wow. is. Sadly, for some stupid reason. <clears throat> the movie doesn't get enough of a good send-off in the movie either. No, he doesn't. It's just a rush to, near the end. Okay, well, this is, this is a, okay. Like, I wouldn't have known this. I had to, like, look it up. <laughs> it's a deep cut Kevin Smets question. Um... I mean, it's. I think it's like one of those things where you just see and they don't say. Okay. Okay. What orphanage did Dumbledore first meet the calamity of all calamities, the evil Voldemort as a kid? <laughs> That's it how is. he worded the question. <laughs> it's but. a good, it's a well-worded question. It's Wool's Orphanage. Yes. Like, I, I didn't know that. I had to look it up. <laughs> yeah, that's just, if you, you know, if you search Voldemort or Tom Riddle, it will always come up that he went to Wool's orphanage. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to have just spotted it in the movie. Okay. Or anything like that. Okay. Who is the killer of Lavender Brown in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2? Greyback. Fenrir Greyback. Bites her. But for some reason, she doesn't become a werewolf. She just dies. dies. <laughs> she was kind of annoying anyway. So... I know, but we, we, don't, we, don't like, we don't like death. I, I would have I would have happily dealt with decades more of one one. Uh, oh no, thank you. No one one. <laughs> <laughs> no more one one. <laughs> okay, in the Order of the Phoenix, the one I never even remember. <laughs> Arthur Weasley is most fascinated and asks Harry about what kids toy. <laughs> oh, is it a book question? No, it's in the movie. It's in the movie. I... What kids toy? Oh, like, no. I can kind of hear the line in my head. I don't know if I have it exactly. Arthur but... Weasley asks, Order of the Phoenix. Yes. Arthur Weasley asks Harry. He's fascinated by a particular kid's toy. Obviously, Chamber of Secrets, it's all about rubber ducks. We know that. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? That's Chamber of Secrets. Order of the Phoenix, well, I feel no, like that's it's... it. That's it. This, this is a rubber duck. But he says it's from... Order of the Phoenix. Oh, it's so. definitely from Chamber of Secrets. Okay. Or de- yeah, yeah, at the start, at the start of Chamber of Secrets, um, when Harry's at the borough and they're all sat around the table, Arthur comes in, being all like, "Oh, what, oh, what a mean? night! What a night! All these raids! All these raids! Oh, Harry, Harry Potter! Oh, well, tell me, Harry, I'm fascinated with Muggles. What exactly is the function of a rubber <laughs> duck? Yes, I remember that, and I, so I thought that's what it was. And I looked it up, and all I could find was rubber duck. So maybe there's a different one in Order of the Phoenix. But when I looked maybe it there up, is when I looked it up because I was like, it's a rubber duck, right? And then I looked it up, the toy that he's fascinated with, and the only thing that came up was rubber duck. Unless, unless, um, I, I mean, I trust Kevin, so it might be something like a yo-yo or something uh, like that. We'll have we'll have to hear what Kevin has to yes, say. Yes, maybe Kevin will be in the chat and he can tell us. Because now yes. that you're now that you're telling me it wasn't that movie, because yeah. I remember the line, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what movie it was from. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Kevin wouldn't Kevin wouldn't get that wrong. No, so he wouldn't. I think I think he is talking about something else. Okay, to, so he's getting he's to which getting I, out. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. To which I think is a yo-yo. Okay, okay, You're probably right. Okay. Um, okay, he's getting kind of outside of the the movies. Okay, we're getting lol questions now. Um, just uh, stuff Gen- like uh, crew. Crew stuff. Crew stuff, okay. Yes. Okay, all the movies, except one, were written by Steve Cloves. Which movie didn't he write, and who was the writer? <laughs> Which movie wasn't written by Steve Cloves? I feel like... No. Which movie wasn't written by Steve Cloves? Mm, no. No. Hmm. That's a good question. Because yeah. I don't know who that other writer was then. Yeah, well, you, uh, that you're getting these questions from the inner geekdom champion himself. So. I'm, I don't know. I don't uh, know. I would go to multiple choice on that one. Well, I can't give you a multiple choice. No, I know, but that's what I would do. I would actually have to go to multiple choice on that one. I don't know. I feel like... My, my my heart. I would go to multiple choice. My heart wants to say, "Philosopher's Stone," though, for some reason. No. Okay. Shoot. Um, it would be the Order of the Phoenix. Okay. And Michael Goldenberg. Okay, fair enough. Writer, writer of the classic film <laughs> Green Lantern. Dd. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I think that's why he knows that, as Green Lantern is an, uh, another inner geek to movie. He Probably. <laughs> Probably, yeah. So I'm sure I, in his research, he realized, oh, yeah. okay, he wrote the Order of the Phoenix. That's probably, yeah. why, I don't, that's probably why I don't re- ever remember Order of the Phoenix, and it's probably like my least favorite, because... <laughs> I, I, I quite like Order of the Phoenix. I mean, when I watch it, it's fine. I just never, like, when I'm going through the sequence, it's the one I always have to, like, really think about. Like, what is that other one? The other one with Dumbledore's army. What What is that? Like, I never remember. Like, I always want to call it Dumbledore's army, and I'm like, no, that's not what Harry it is. Harry Potter and Dumbledore's <laughs> army. <laughs> like, it's the Dumbledore's army one, but what is... What, uh, like I always skip past it. I never really remember anything from it. Like it's always the one I just blank out on completely. Okay, that's so. a good question though. Yes, I like that. Okay, well, this one I had to look up, but I don't know. One of them I I sounded familiar with the answers, um, and then the other two were just like other answers that I don't know that they said in the movie, but it's probably in the book. Okay. Um, so I probably should have asked him, but um, yeah. Aside from the Mer people, what other creatures lurked in the Black Lake? Well, there was the giant squid and okay. Grindy Lows. Yes. Is that it? And there's one more that was there, but I didn't know. Like, the Grindy Lows was the only one that I remember like, okay. hearing. And then the other two were ones I don't think I heard, remember hearing in the movie. So I yeah, there's the, there's the Mer like, people, the giant squid, Grindy Lows, and fish. Um, it says selkies. Selkie. Okay. Yeah, that's a low. That's a low key creature. That's yeah. like a. I feel like that's an a thing that. Yeah, that's like a. It's probably mentioned in Fantastic Beasts, to be honest. Yeah, because like when I looked it up. Grindy Lowe's was like highlighted, like bolded, like you could click on it and get more information. And Giant Squid was highlighted, like you could get more information, but Selkies was not. So okay. Like, Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what floor was the Prefect's bathroom located on? Prefect's bathroom? On which Prefect's bathroom? The one where he takes a bath? Yes. Prefect's bathroom on the. Go to the Prefect's bathroom on the fifth floor. Yes. Yes. I thanks, like, like thanks hearing Cedric. Hearing it. <laughs> Cedric Diggory. <laughs> thanks, Cedric. Thanks. You would never be an insult to his memory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not to be an insult to Cedric Diggory's memory. <laughs> um, okay. What no. bridge? What bridge is destroyed by Death Eaters in the opening of Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince? The Millennium Bridge in London. Mm. Okay. Which goes all floppy like this. Yes. And this is the last question. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Snape will teach you how to bottle what and to brew what. You teach you, I can teach you how to bottle fame and brew glory. And what is the last part of that? And p- maybe put a stopper in death, or even put a stopper in death. Yeah, we to all get right. The correct. There will right. be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class. Yeah, all right. You did. You did pretty good. I think you missed yeah, like three. I only three? got a couple. Like yeah, I only got a couple times? wrong. Yeah, I wasn't giving myself the Dean Pavati Seamus fiasco because i felt like that was a whole list and i remember going back and watching it and it was literally just like yeah dean told pavardi (laughs) and um i frankly just didn't know the writer one i i i thought steve clovers wrote them all um and what was the other one the sel- um, selkies, it'll be not giving me the one for selkies. No, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you that. I'm giving you that one. I give you that one. Um, and I, yeah, the rubber ducky one, I, that's on me because I. Oh, the rubber duck one. I just assumed rubber ducky was the one. But um, he's saying that specific movie and it wasn't in that movie. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yay yeah, for Potter you quiz. Did, you did very good. Celebrations, celebrations. Yeah. Is there anything we have to do? Um, I don't know. It's, it's up to you, birthday boy. Anything else you want to do? I don't know. I think this has been a fun stream, Janine. I agree. You've finished your glass of wine now? I have. I've finished my drink. We've gone a nice length of time. I think it's just time to say thank you. All right. And thank you for celebrating my birthday. <laughs> Even though I never really wanted to celebrate my birthday, it's been nice, you know. Yes. And I've enjoyed doing all this presents, you know, um, quizzes and movies and fun things. And yes, just thank you to the people watching this and who will watch this and who are going to watch this and who have watched this. Um. You know, this is just a teaser for the kind of things that we do every week on the Patreon, on patreon.com slash it's a wonderful one, or just it's a wonderful podcast on Patreon, Patreon, find us there. And at the $5 tier, you get to hang out with us on live live streams. Yeah, Yeah, they're just chill sessions every Sunday. Yes, they're just chill sessions, hangout sessions, talking to y'all. And it's very, very fun. It's always daft as well and silly. And we're creating a nice little group of people. And it's nice yes. to see. Uh, but yeah, what uh, what else can they do? I guess we have to actually plug stuff today. <laughs> well, let me just ask you one more thing about Harry okay. Potter. What is your favorite Harry Potter quote? My favorite Harry Potter the movie. quote? Like what, movie, what is your favorite line of all of Harry Potter? I mean, it's a kind of a I guess it's kind of a basic one. I think. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. I have to think. I have to think. Okay. Well, let's plug think. some things and then. Yes. We'll you plug back. some things. I will think. All right. So, yeah, we have all the shows on our feed. It's a wonderful podcast. We have Machine Mondays every Monday with me, Janine the Machine, where I'm talking Schmodown stuff. Not a lot going on in the Schmodown world right now, but I uh, do what I can and I love talking to you guys about the Schmodown. So, yeah, find that every Monday on our feed. Uh, every Wednesday we have Morgan Hasn't Seen. We discussed in length, you know, I pick a related series of films or a franchise that Morgan Hasn't Seen and we discuss. We are still on our movies based on TV shows. Uh, we have our bonus next week, which will be on The Wrath of Khan and we will be watching the Space Seed episode of the show uh, for some extra context. That'll be fun. Uh, and then every Friday we have the main show. It's a wonderful podcast where we give love to all those classic movies. And per our patron, Carla Fiss, there's a tier where you get to pick an episode each month, a topic for an episode of one of our shows every month. And she picked Zorro. She loves the mask of Zorro. And while, um, 
It's a Wonderful Podcast is a classic film show. We decided to do a retrospective of Zorro. So we will be talking about Zorro 1920, Zorro 1940, and the 1998 Zorro movie, which is the one that she loves very much. So yeah, those are all the shows we have. And you can find them at all the podcast places. You certainly, certainly can. I have a quote. Okay. Uh, I wanted do it to make character? sure I got the wording exactly <laughs> right. It's the kind of obvious one. The obvious Dumbledore one of happiness can be found even in the darkest of times oh, if one only remembers to turn on the light. The light. Oh, I love that. That's Which wonderful. is just a great quote. Yes. It's just, you know, perfect. I love that quote. Was Yay. that was that in his will? And it's in at the will. start of Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. But is that was also in the will when he gives the deluminator to Bronn? Mm, possibly, quite possibly, it would make sense. I would, I would, I would like to think it is, or something along the same lines as that. But it's a good quote. Yes. It's a really good quote. That's this is that's kind of why I like Michael Gambon as Dumbledore because in his first scene he comes out with that quote. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's his first scene. Yeah. As Michael Michael Gambon as Dumbledore. It's great. That's it. All Thank right. you for doing all the plugging, Ginny. Yes, of course. You can, of course, find me on Twitter at the Purple Dawn with the three instead of the E in the because three is the magic number, not seven. Not seven, <laughs> but also seven, but three in this case. But in this case, um, it's three. <laughs> find the show on Twitter. Find the feed at It's a Wonderful One, Janine, All your stuff is at. You can find me at Janine DeBean on Twitter and Instagram. I try to do some fun posts uh, reminding you guys to leave voice messages. We love hearing from you guys for, for all the shows, any of the shows. So I'll put kind of a fun post with the link to leave a voice message for any of the topics we're discussing on any of our three shows. So check that out at Janine DeBean. And uh, yeah, if you want to get any merch for any of our shows or you want to check out my artwork, you can find it all at my tea shop on tpublic.com at G9Design. There we go, guys. Get excited for the Zorro stuff tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be great. Go and listen to the George of the Jungle episode of Morgan Has It Seen, which went up yesterday. And, uh, yeah, that's all. Yay. We've got nothing else, got nothing left to do. Thank you to everybody again, and thank you for all the birthday wishes. It's very sweet. Makes my heart full and warm <laughs> and nice. Yes, happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Janine, there's only one thing left to do, so why the hell haven't you done it already? Three, two, one. Bye. Bye.